In today's video, I'm going to be going over the fastest way to get through the Team Affinity Season 4 program so you guys can start unlocking some of these new Team Affinity collection cards like the Brandon Crawford, Charlie Blackman, and Nolan Ryan who all just look amazing and cards that you guys are going to want to add to your lineup. And make sure you guys leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel for more Season 4 videos. And we're also getting so close to 1,000 subscribers, so would appreciate all the love right there. But let's go ahead and get into the Team Affinity programs right here. And the first thing I would highly recommend you guys do if you guys have the stubs or the cards stacked up are the exchanges. And I would do them first just because it'll help unlock some of the Team Affinity reward path players, right? Um, and you guys don't have to do all these exchanges. You know, it seems like a lot and it is a ton of stubs if you do them for all, all of these for all the divisions. So even if you just do one for like 6,000, that's a decent boost. Um, but if you are able to get like 25, 26,000 worth of team affinity points from completing all of the exchanges for each of the divisions. Um, the next thing I would do though are for sure are the moments right here. You do get a total of 7,500 um, team affinity points from completing all of the moments within each division. And then the next thing I would do, it just makes the most sense, is showdown worth 20,000 team affinity points. And once the moments and showdowns from all of the divisions are completed, you will have unlocked two players from each of the divisions, um, which will be enough to then have a full team to start grinding missions, right? Because there's six total um, divisions and then two from each, that'll be 12. So enough to field an entire team and pitching staff, pretty much a pitching staff as well. Um, and then uh, the next thing I would do then, you're going to have that team. Go ahead and go into all of the conquests, knock all of these out. Keep in mind, there are three maps, one for the West east and central um, and none of them seem to have um, a lot of simming that you need to do in them so that's going to save some time that is nice um, but yeah knock out those um, conquest maps with the all the players that you get from the reward path to start um, you know working towards those missions and honestly, before you start playing games and after you plug in some of the players into your lineup, go ahead and check some of these missions to make sure you're completing what you need to do, right? So like for, you know, let's just say it's a it's a captain or something, right? You want to get 12 strikeouts with Messina. You want to get 10 hits with the Rosa Reina. You want to make sure you're doing all of those specific things, right? Um, paying attention to that. Or it could be just... Um, you know, classic cards or team builds um, that you're working on or boss missions, which are all PXP goals that you need to do. So then all you need to do is get those certain amount of PXP. You don't need to focus on, um, you know, getting hits or doubles or strikeouts, whatever it is. And all of this will help you just grind all these missions the most efficient way possible. Uh, but then also, once you guys are working through like the classics, the um, captain card missions, you know, once you get up to some of these bosses, you could start using these bosses because keep in mind, there is the repeatable, you know, you need 1000 PXP um, with bosses from each division, but then they also have each each boss has their own specific goal too, or 3,500 points. So um, those are really good. Otherwise, you could stack your team full of, you could stack your entire team full of, you know, one, um, like the Astros or something, you know, or the Red Sox, whatever, all at Red Sox players, all Yankees players. Um, and then that's a good way to grind out the team builds because again, those are repeatable. You get 5,000 per 2,000 PXP. Then at this point, once you have the moments, showdown, and then conquest maps, some of the missions done, and maybe some exchanges done, you'll probably be around halfway done with team the team affinity programs, maybe even slightly over halfway done. And then, so at this point, all you need to be doing basically is grinding missions. And there's a couple different ways of doing this. Um, one, play versus CPU. So what you want to do is play a crappy team, be the home team, and then what you want to do, this is key, uh, pick a custom stadium short you know high elevation short walls so you can hit tons of home runs extra base hits all of that um to make you know all of the stat missions the pxp missions um super super easy because again you'll be stacking your entire team with team affinity players or you know players from all one team and then you know if you want you can quit out even after a few innings you don't have to play all nine innings you can play three four innings um and then quit out and you'll still be gaining the progress from all of that grinding and then the other way you could be gaining team affinity mission progress quickly is by playing the new 
team affinity for mini season right here and with mini seasons it might not be as efficient of a pxp grind as play versus cpu at least in my opinion but you know you'll still be earning a bunch of pxp um you know team affinity player mission progress plus some of these vouchers because remember for every five wins you get a voucher and then when you make the playoffs you get a voucher and then when you win the semifinals, you get two vouchers and then when you win the championship you get three more vouchers and for these three right here you can be well actually for all of the uh, vouchers you can complete this once per season so you can do this uh you know season as many times as you want but again you want to be the home team for these games and then when you're setting your lineup obviously you either want to stack your team with team affinity players or you know a team full of you know one like a red Sox team right um so you can get those uh, team missions knocked out quickly and then play on rookie or whatever difficulty is easiest for you and then again you're the home team so that means you can pick your uh, stadium right here um, so blank canvas, you know, a custom stadium, max elevation, and you don't really have to play the road games. You can kind of just skip over the road games, just play your home, uh, you know, your home games, and you still should be able to make the playoffs that way. Or you could play one or two road games, pick up a couple dubs on the road, and then, you know, you'll easily be in the playoffs and you might get more vouchers um, from this goal right here. And whether you choose to play play versus CPU or mini seasons, it's all completely up to you. I know a lot of people get sick of mini seasons and would rather just get, you know, quick PXP through play versus CPU, um, you know, but if you want the extra vouchers or the extra, you know, and the packs that come along with mini seasons, because again, you're going to be making lots of packs through mini seasons too, um, then mini seasons could be what you grind completely up to you. So like I said earlier, I just think this is the most efficient way of completing Team Affinity, you know, starting off with the moments, exchanges if you want, um, and then going down, knocking out the showdown, going to get a couple players from that, plug into your lineup, start doing the conquest, start working towards those missions, um, and then once you get all that done, um, continue to work on those missions, either in Play vs. CPU um, or Mini Seasons, and be the home team um, where you can easily and pick your custom stadium and grind PXP, grind those stat missions um, just as quickly, efficiently as possible. And as you guys can kind of tell, Team Affinity this season is super similar, basically the same thing to Season 3 of Team Affinity, um, and it also has this collection, which is super, super nice. Just gives us something else to grind towards, because this Brandon Crawford, this Charlie Blackman right here, and this Nolan Ryan all look like very good cards, you know, worth grinding for, um, and, you know, because even, like, Charlie Blackman, I think, plays way above what his uh, attributes normally say, and his attributes on this card right here are just absolutely insane, so I'm really looking forward to using and un unlocking and using those cards right there. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about Team Affinity and the Team Affinity Collection. And again, make sure you guys do hit that subscribe button. We're so close to 1,000 subscribers. Uh, I really appreciate all of that. And I appreciate all of you guys for sticking around through the end of this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.